Okay, so we're going to set up a, a new document here that's going to be the size that you could use for designing your, your websites. Okay, now as we mentioned yesterday, the actual width you should design um, your pages to, unless you've got good reason to, to kind of go outside that size, should be 960 pixels. So the document size we're going to set up is going to be slightly bigger than that because whenever you look at a web page, it will always have a kind of strict border along either side, which would be the, the background. Okay, so 960 is the kind of design of the content. Um, but 1024 is what we're going to use for the, the full width. Okay, so if we go to uh, File and New in Photoshop, and we're going to use this um, size 1024 by 768. If you want to give your background a bit more space, or you want to spend more bit more time designing it, you could use 1152 uh, if you wanted to. Okay, but the actual width of the content should be uh, <coughs> 960. Okay. Um, so when you're designing your wireframes this uh, this week, then you can uh, use uh, those those settings. And I'll show you another website later, which uh, kind of has some uh, material available for you to download and use. I'm going to set the color profile to um, Adobe RGB, and then we'll just open this up. So this is going to be quite quick. Um, really, what I want to do is look at the pen tool. Um, and the brush tool, and using the pen tool um, in this uh, path drawing mode. So basically, when we take the pen tool, and I'm just going to click, um, and when I click again, I'm going to click and drag. So I'm clicking and holding down as I use the mouse to give that um, curve um, to the edge of the, the path here. Okay, so I've done that one a bit too close. So I can just do Command and Z as I'm drawing with a pen tool. So you can use uh, the pen tool to actually make selections as well. So um, the nice thing about that is that you can always come back in and adjust these points after they've been drawn. Okay. So you've got some really nice kind of control when you're using it. So I'm just going to draw this quick Bezier path and show you how you can adjust it. So if you come back to the direct selection tool here, we can actually select different points, um, adjust the angle, um, and adjust the shape, and then kind of move them around. Okay. If we think we're going to be using this path uh, more than once, so more than just this one time to kind of stroke along it, if we go into paths, we can actually drag this um, into the new uh, path um, icon here in the paths tab and it will basically save that path so it kind of remembers it now. It's not a work path anymore that's temporary, it's actually a, a permanent path. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, rename this uh, line 1. Okay, so with this selected, um, with the, the brush tool selected, I'm just going to change this to, to black and white. Now, I've got my path selected brush tool selected, if I press stroke on path it will draw a line on the path. Now if you're drawing with a, a pen tool you can actually control um, the weight of the line so you can taper off a line as you draw it um, when you're pulling it across. Um, but if you're actually using a path to, to stroke along you need to change some of the brushes Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, you can change some of the brushes settings so that the path will actually taper off. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, take a step back here. I'm going to make a new layer so that my, my path will be drawn with transparency around it. Okay, so just push the hardness of this up a little bit more and uh, come into the, the shape dynamics um, for the brush tool. Now the key uh, <coughs> feature here that I'm going to look at is this uh, pen pressure or this control option here. At the moment it's set to pen pressure because I sometimes use a back on tablet to, to draw with. Um, if I click here and change it to fade, it will actually allow that um, brush to fade as it kind of moves along this line. Okay, um, I've already set this previously to 200 so we'll just have a look at what that does. So I come back to the, the path and with the brush tool selected hit stroke on path and you can see that it actually tapers off really nicely um, as it moves along the, the path there. Okay. How would you, if you wanted to 
the stroke to fill the entire line and then fade off. Yeah, so you just need to tweak this uh, fade um, option here. So if I change it to 500 and then stroke the path, it will stroke okay. more of the path. So you just got to kind of play with this uh, setting and see how far along the path it goes. Oops. Okay, so you can see it stroking along the, the path there. Okay. Um, now the nice thing about this is that if we do draw a line, so I'm going to pick <coughs> a, a nice orange here. So if we draw with along this path, if we stroke it, and then we want to add something to it, we can actually do something like changing the, the color reducing the brush size and then stroke line again and you can see you get that um, just use a different color brush because you can't really see it that clearly there just use white you can see that you can actually stroke it along the inside of that part so you get this kind of layering of the different um, brushes okay. so that's something to, to have a play with um, today and what you might want to try and do is mix some of the photographs that you play with with these these paths and strokes now one other area where you can use these paths is if you're fixing part of an image, so say the, the edge of a computer screen um, or the edge of like a, um, a rim of some glasses or a glass, <coughs> then you can actually use the stroke path to actually run a, um, a brush a, along the edge of it. So if you imagine like there's a glint of light um, on the edge of um, an image, then you can actually use these strokes. And, use the brush tool to actually stroke along a path to you know, re 